Inflation is not coming down. Yes, it's not going up as high as it was, but the high prices are where they are and they're not coming down. Listen to what they said. All their sales are down, but they raise the prices, so they're making more money. Are you ready to transform your life? This is a no-nonsense show helping immigrants like you create generational wealth, even while working full-time. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Socket Jane. My great to us listeners, if you want to manage real estate, maybe you're ready for a lifestyle change. By selling your real estate, of course, you may have to pay substantial cap and gain taxes. One option that may help solve this is to learn about doing a 1031 tax deferred real estate exchange. Because you may be able to defer all of the capital gain taxes, and you could even exchange into a replacement property that may allow you to get rid of all of the headaches involved with being an active landlord. Ray Dewitt is a managing director with Bantanger Financial Services, and his goal is to help you understand all the rules associated with the 1031 exchanges. To learn more, visit their website at bantangerfinancial.com and browse the library of education material. Please be sure to see the disclosures and show notes. Welcome back, my great to wealth listeners. Today, we're going to be talking to someone who is a trend setter and a trend follower and a trend lower. He actually has a weekly magazine called Trends Journal. He loves the trends so much, he wanted to start his own magazine. His name is Gerald Celenti. Is that how you say the last name? Salenti. Actually, my real last name is Chalantana. Chalantano. I love that. All right, Joe. Well, thank you for taking the time, buddy. I really appreciate you. I know you're pressed on time. You have a lot of things going on. So we really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. We're going to go right into the thick of it. I know your time is limited here. So I want to go right into it. I'm going to skip a lot of different questions that I usually ask my guests. So help us understand what's the fascination with the trend for you, Gerald? I'm going to make a very long story short. I was the number two guy running a major trade association. I know what I know because I've been on the other side. I used to run major political campaigns in Westchester County in New York, richest county in America at the time. And I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. And I was in D.C. working from Chicago to D.C. I was the number one guy, a chief government affairs specialist. <laughs> I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement. <laughs> back in the 1970s. I started growing up at a later age, and what really changed my life, and I started the Trends Research Institute in 1980, was when Jimmy Carter came back from Iran and said, he visiting the Shah as the protests were going on, and said the Shah was the island of stability in the Middle East. Mm. The Bronx used to have a saying, bullshit has its own sound. <laughs> I'm watching this thing go on, the people had no idea of the United States and the UK's overthrow of Mosaddegh in 1953. They had no idea of Savak, the secret police, the murderous group that made the SS look good. Anyway, at that time, I became a political atheist. And I said to myself, as everybody's learning to hate Iran, I said, what would be the implication? And I started playing the gold and oil futures, knowing that both would go up as tensions kept rising. And I had a $5,000 bet in that total, and I brought it up to almost three quarters of a million dollars in the late 1970s. Wow. And I quit my job, and I started the Trends Research Institute, began writing the Trends Journal back in 1991. And I had best-selling hooks, Trends to 2000, international bestseller, Trend tracking, far better than Megatrends, Time Magazine. So I've been at this a lot of years. I look at things to the way they are, not the way I want them to be. And when it's very important in trend forecasting, opportunity misses those who view the world through the eyes of their profession. Mm -hmm. so people are totally focused on what they know and like and not what's going on all around. Around. And again, they take positions on things. You right. know, ask people, I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative. How about growing up and being nothing? Being yeah. self so that's really the basis of it. So from me, the, one of my first trends is the bottled water trend back in 1986. I said, people are going to be drinking bottled. Back then, Perrier was the only one out there. That was all I had a name by it. And then a few others. And gourmet coffees to the dot-com plus Wall Street Journal. I was one of the first to call the, um, I was the first to call the 1987 stock market crash. Took out the domain name. The Panic of 08, 2007. So I've been at this a lot of years. And right now, we are in my lifetime, 
the most critical socioeconomic and geopolitical crisis that I've ever seen and witnessed. Let's talk more about that, Gerald, because I do want to leverage your background and your strengths in trends and trying to paint a picture of what the future may look like, immediate future may look like. And maybe we'll also talk about the long term, because no surprise to anyone, especially for you, the markets are in turmoil. There's a lot of fear that's existing in the markets right now. How do you recommend cleaning out the noise when all they have is biased inputs from the news articles, right? That's all they are. Most of us are depending on that. And how do you actually clean out the noise from that? Well, what we do, for example, is we read from around the world. So we, Fars News Agency, the Iranian side, Jerusalem Post, take the Israeli side, the Al Jazeera, take that side. Global Times of China, take that side. Times of Japan, go there. So we go around the world and we pick up all the data that they're reporting on. We take out the language. We don't care about what they call people. We just want the facts. And then when we get enough of the facts, we make our trends analysis and trend forecasts. So as we say, if you don't respect freedom, if you can't think for yourself, You'll hate the trends journal because we give you the truth in trends. But other people go to the stations, the news media, the magazines, the newspapers that they like. It's not what you like, it's the facts. And all we do is put in the facts, the facts is being reported, and this is our analysis, and this is our trend forecast. So you know it's not being skewed. There is no journalism anymore. Look at the numbers. They firing everybody. Oh, Business Insider laid off 10% of its staff. Oh, Vice, that was worth what? $5.4 billion went bankrupt. BuzzFeed, just bullshit. They're, they're not, they're no more journalism. And then when you look at the newspaper chains, they've all been bought out by the private equity groups that all they want to do is make money and put stupid headlines in. You know, even like the Wall Street Journal, it's a $5 a day. Shoot out gaffes, knock U.S. out of World Cup. Headline story, this is the Wall Street Journal. I'm buying a damn thing to get financial information. Why right. don't you shove this crap up your butt? I'll tell you why we're doing it. Because all we are are prostitutes. We're media whores that get paid to put out by our corporate pimps and our government whore masters that morons and imbeciles call journalism. Look at this crap. Treasury hunters dig into the mystery of buried Civil War gold. What the hell do I care? I'm paying five dollars a day for this. That's why the Trends Journal is a grand total of two dollars and eighty six cents a week. And over yeah. 150 pages a week. And if you subscribe to your site, we're giving the people 10% off. So it's that's very generous. Nothing. Thank you, Gerald. No, thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. I mean, I have a copy of that. I'm heartbroken to see what's happening. I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, Good Morning America. I was on everybody all the time, BBC, France 24. They don't like me because I won't swallow their crap. That's all the people do. They eat crap. Look what they eat. It's blimp biters. And they swallow the crap that's shoved down their throat by politicians and prostitutes. Yeah. It's kind of sad, right? Because to your point, and I think we're not helping ourselves because we want to hear the story that we have a bias towards. And to your point, we go to the sources that we like and we're hearing the same. So our biases are getting more and more confirmed instead of challenging your bias. I know Robert Kiyosaki's testimony on your Trends Journal website. I love him. We're talking about the three sides of the coin. You want to stand on the edge of the coin and look at both sides because that's when yep. you get the real data. Yep. So Here's I another that. one. This is the Wall Street Journal this past Tuesday. For International Cat Day, the oh eyes have Oh, my God, it. man. Oh. $5 a day to swallow stupid crap. The Wall Street Journal used to be that thick. Now it's that thick. And again, I subscribe to the New York Times, $4 a day. We barely get a trend story in it. So you're asking about trend forecasting. Mm -hmm. We read it so that we know what the people are thinking, what they know and what they don't know. Right. So then we have an observation of why things go in different directions and how 
for example, in a political campaign, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, advertising, what you should sell, what you shouldn't sell, because what the people are being fed. So again, we look at it for what it is, not the way we want it to be. Yeah. And we read crap that we don't want to read, but we read it anyway so that we have an overview of the general picture. It's called the global nomic system of trend forecasting. All things are connected, or as Chief yeah. Seattle said, all things are connected like the blood which unites us all. Yeah. So, Joel, let me ask this. So where do you see the trends going right now? Let's talk about top three trends or four trends you're looking at right now where people can position themselves to be more opportunistic or protect them from what's coming. The biggest one that we called in the Trends Journal over three years ago in March of 2020, when they began to lock down everything, is office building bust. Yeah. The commercial real estate sector, particularly offices in the malls, are finished. Again, by the data, by the data, yeah. office occupancy rate in the 10 largest cities in the United States, according to Castle Systems with a K, is 50%. Mm. That means all the businesses that used to depend on commuters, dry cleaners are drying up. Yeah. All the happy hours, no more, because the people, if they are going into work, they're going in three days a week and Friday's the day mm -hmm. they're not going in. Right. So all the restaurants, all the bars, all the delicatessen, all the dry cleaners, the hairdressers, the shoemakers, the business. Let's go back to this. It was overbuilt before this happened. Now their mortgages, their payments are coming up. And a lot of these are floating loans. Right. So now interest rates have gone way up. Now they have to pay more on their debt as they got less tenants coming. Wow. You're going to see bank default. They're going to default on loans. The banking crisis has just begun. And we saw this week that Fitch, they just downgraded a couple of more banks. This is right. just the beginning. And this is so important. It's summertime and the living is easy. People are totally tuned out. They don't know what's going on. This banking crisis should have crashed the markets, but hey, the markets went up again because all oh, the inflation numbers came in and they're not as bad as they predicted. They came in at 3.2% and the street said it would be 3.3%. What the hell are you talking about? One tenth of a percent and these inflation numbers are a load of yeah. crap because you don't put the real numbers in. They rig the numbers. Everybody knows it. Correct. They double what they are. And again, that's not my BS. That's a fact. Oh, housing prices went up 40%. No, no, we're not going to put that in there. Oh, you know what the average rent is? Apartment rental in New York City just came out. $5,200 a month. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Who could afford that? So inflation is not coming down. Yes, it's not going up as high as it was, but the high prices are where they are and they're not coming down. Oh, don't believe me. The people that drink the crap called Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola and buy Unilever products, listen to what they said. All their sales are down, but they raise the prices, so they're making more money. Oh, that's not inflation. Right. Oh, and then the crap that they're shoving down the people's throat, we got to raise interest rates so we lower those wages because wages are growing up, and that's just bringing in inflation. No, wages are way behind inflation. What brought inflation is, is when they fought the COVID war, they dumped trillions and trillions of dollars, governments, countless trillions to fight this stupid war. And I call it the war because that's what the politicians called it. That's how they do it all the time. They spread fear. They called it the COVID war. And then interest rates in America down to zero and negative in Europe, negative in Japan and lower all around the world. That's what brought up inflation. And that's what brought up merger and acquisition activity hit an all time high in 2021. Right. So the inflation numbers are not coming down. They're not as high as they used to be, but the cost of living is astronomical. Yeah. Insurance went up. The cost of fixing your automobile, the stupid automobiles they're making with all this moronic electronic crap. Can't open the trunk by itself. Got to go up by itself. One stupid thing after another, boop, boop, lock the door. Oh, you can't put the key in the door and turn it? Right. No, 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 no. I'm telling you the inflation numbers are astronomical that are hitting the average person. Common person is listening to this and they're going to be hopefully subscribing your journal as well. What's coming or where the opportunity lies? So I think where the trend is that inflation is not coming down great, but how do you translate that 
into a potential space for opportunity that people could keep their eyes and ears open for. What goes up must come down. It happens all the time. These are cycles. Look at your data coming out of China. China, when they launched the COVID war and Chinese Lunar New Year 2020, the year of the rat, they had zero COVID policy for three years. They destroyed the economy, put hundreds of millions of people out of work, destroyed it. Look beyond China, look at China's exports. Mm -hmm. They're way down. That's telling you the global picture. Look at China's imports. They're way down. Hey, how about all those countries in Europe that love to sell those products in America to Japan? They're not buying them anymore. You look at Japan's GDP from 1970 to 2001. They came in officially, that slime ball. Bill Clinton brought him into the World Trade Organization in 2000. There was a protest going on, by the way, in 1999. They called it the Battle of Seattle. The World Trade Organization was meeting in Seattle, and the people were protesting, bringing China in. But it got out of the news because they had some agents provocateurs smashing windows and burning a car, and that's all they put it on. The Americans didn't want to bring China into the World Trade Organization because they knew they'd ship all our jobs over there. Anyway, then their GDP skyrockets after that. They overbuilt China as the boom went on. It was ready to bust. And now it's busted because they also destroyed it with their lockdowns. So now you have to look at the data. It's a global slowdown. Europe is officially in recession. Mm -hmm. Oh, the new numbers came out. They're like 0.1% outside of it or something stupid like that. Germany, the fourth largest economy in the world in recession. Oh, no, the last numbers came out, said it was flat. They're not up or not down. You look at the manufacturing indexes. They're all down. You don't look at the consumer product numbers. You look at manufacturing. It's down everywhere. So we're going into the crash. And we believe the markets are going to go down sharply at the end of September or into October. Again, the people are in a summer state of mind right now. Reality will start hitting the streets when the summertime's over. And to us, we don't give financial advice. We give trends analysis and trend forecasts. Gold is number one. Very simple. Mm -hmm. When they start lowering interest rates in the United States, The dollar is going to go down. The deeper the dollar goes down, the higher gold prices go up. End of story. Gold is dollar based. So now as the dollar goes down, it's cheaper for countries with other currencies to buy gold. And you're looking again in the magazine, in the Trends Journal, we wrote about it and we write about economic updates every week and market overviews. The big hedge funds, the private equity groups, they're wondering, they're, they want more money coming in. The money's not coming in. You know why the money's not coming in? Because people are buying treasuries. They're buying safe bets. Right. And they're getting 5% on their money. So the equity markets are totally rigged. If 1% owns 54% of all U.S. equities. 10% wow. owns 90%. Those are the facts. That is crazy, Gerald. Wow. Gerald, I'm more excited about getting deeper into these trends because I think these trends trends are your friends. I think you actually had a cover page that you sent me, trends are your friends. And I believe that trends are your friends because if you don't understand the trends, especially our audience who's trying to create financial freedom for them so that they can get freedom of time, if you don't understand the trends, how are you going to make these investment thesis? So you need to understand that. And also for your own freedom, right? Do you need to understand where the world is heading? That's way more important than financial freedom to make sure that you have your own freedom and liberty available to you and no one's pushing things down your throat, which is happening. We're seeing that. We saw that during the COVID time. So I think that's important. Jalak, I know you have a limited time. I wanted to make sure I squeeze it in and get as I can get out of you. I want to remind people that Gerald has made a very generous offer to give a 10% discount to anyone who wants to subscribe. We're going to include a code and the link on the show notes below. So I encourage everyone to check it out. It's not a lot of money. It's less than your cup of coffee a a day. And he's going to give you it for a week for 150 pages. And the guys and his team is doing all the research. So why not? And then try it out and see if it works out. And I have a very strong feeling. I actually have it open in front of my desk. This is the only thing I'm doing right after this conversation gets off. I'm like, I want to get deeper into reading it myself. Well, thank you again, Gerald. We really appreciate it. Good luck with everything you're doing. You're doing a phenomenal job in getting the truth out in the world 
but on an objective manner, not as your opinion, which is the most important thing to do. Yes. And what you said is so important too. You know, everybody listening, it's all about you. It's your freedom to think and be who you want. And my recommendation to everybody, get in the best shape you can physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And when you're talking about trends, again, you know, I've been at this, the facts are here, these major books, they don't teach you trend forecasting at Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge. They, nobody teaches it. You know why? They don't know how. Mm. They don't have a clue. But you can get a degree in art history, you know, and what happened in 1492. You can know all about that stuff. And every year you look at the media as the new year begins. You know what they talk about? This is what happened last year. What the hell do I care about what happened last year? What's right. going to happen next year? We don't know because we don't have a clue. So that's what we, we're doing. We're giving people the current events forming future trends. And it's very important. Tracking trends is the understanding of where we are and how we got here to see where we're going. And where we're going, I've been at this for 43 years. If we don't reverse these trends, it's going to be hell on earth. We need peace on earth. And very few people are talking about it. And one of my movements is Occupy Peace. You could go to OccupyPeace.com because the maniacs in charge love war. They hate peace. So thank you for all that you're doing. I'm honored to be on your show and looking forward to being on again. Oh, you're coming back, Gerald. You know that. <laughs> well, thank you again, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you got value from this episode, you might consider sharing this content with a friend. But most importantly, be sure to take action on what you've learned. One way you can take the next step is to connect directly with Socket on an investor call. That link is waiting for you in the show notes below. The content of this podcast is for informational purposes only. Please consult your own advisors when making any investment decisions. Keep listening. We'll see you on the next episode.